Hello everyone and welcome back. My name is Mr. Cobalt and in this video I'm going to go over another calor calorimetry problem or heat transfer problem. So let's get into this. So in this problem we're asked what volume of ethane C286 measured at 23.6 I'm sorry 23 degrees Celsius and 752 millimeters mercury would be required to heat 859 sorry, 55 grams of water from 25.0 degrees to 98.0 degrees. So let's get into this. So where do we begin? Well, first we need a balanced equation for the uh, combustion of ethane, because remember the combustion of ethane is going to be giving off the heat. So think about, you know, we got our, our um, ethane, we're burning it. We're going to use that heat to heat up the water. So we have a transfer of heat from the reaction to the water. So we need to know what the balanced equation is so we can figure out uh, what that is. So that's going to be uh, let's see. Oops. So we have C2 uh, C2 C2H6 so that's the formula of ethane. Okay. So we know in burning, in any combustion reaction, the other reactant is going to be oxygen, O2. And so in this case, let me put the, uh, the states of matter, C2H6 gas, plus O2 gas. And in any combustion reaction involving a hydrocarbon, then the products are assumed to be carbon dioxide and water. CO2 plus H2O. And that's because we always assume a complete combustion reaction. Um, now we balance the equation. So I have two carbons on this side. I need two on this side. And I have six hydrogens here. I have two over here, so I put a three there. I have two oxygens here, but here I have two times two is four, and three times one is three. So I got seven on that side. So I need seven ox oxygens on this side. What times two gives me seven? 3.5, three and a half, or seven halves. Well, we can't keep the fraction, so I got to multiply by two to get rid of the half. So one times two is two. Seven halves times two is seven, or 3.5 times two is seven. Two times two is four. And then three times two is six. So let me give myself some space here. Six. Okay, now that I have the balanced equation, this is going to be useful because notice that this reaction has two moles of the propane. So whatever the amount of uh, propane or the amount of uh, heat that's uh, released in the reaction here, uh, we need to go, we're going to have to relate that to the two moles here, but I'll get to that in just a moment. Okay, so now that we have that set up, the next thing is to uh, find the or set up the calorimetry type problem. So remember, uh, you got to figure out, you got to find all of the sources that are giving off heat and all of the sources that are absorbing heat um, and set up the Q values for those and, and then set them all equal to each other or set them all equal to zero. I will set them all equal to zero, but we need to figure out what's absorbing heat, what's gaining heat, what's giving off heat, right? So obviously uh, the reaction with the propane is going to be an exothermic reaction. It's going to give off heat. We're burning this. 
And so that way we can heat up the water. So that means that our Q1 is going to be the heat of the reaction, the delta H of the reaction. So it's going to be delta H of the reaction, this reaction here. But so that's going to give off heat. What's absorbing the heat? The only thing mentioned in the problem is the water. So our Q2 is going to be the Q of the water. And so those two Q values are going to be equal to zero. So if we set that equal to zero, that's going to be Q1 plus Q2, which is the same as these. So that's going to be the delta H plus the QW. But what's QW? QW uh, is going to, what equation can we use to calculate QW? That's going to be our Q equals MCAT equation. So that's going to be equal to the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the temperature change of the water. So if we substitute that in, then our, so then it's going to be zero is equal to the enthalpy of the reaction plus QW, which is this. So it's going to be the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the change in temperature of the water. And remember that the change in temperature is final minus initial. So then this becomes equal to delta H of the reaction plus the mass of the water times the specific heat. And then delta H, if you remember, the change in temperature of the water, I'm sorry, I said delta H, I meant delta T. The delta T here, the change in temperature, is going to be equal to the final temperature minus the initial temperature of the water. So we could plug that in. So it's going to be multiplied by the final temperature minus the initial temperature. So now that we have our calorimetry equation here, right, even though we're not using calorimeter, maybe we are using a calorimeter, it could be, you know, a pot. Um, so if we're doing this, then this is our equation. Both of these should be equal to zero because remember the reaction is giving off the heat, the water is absorbing the heat, and we're assuming that it's a complete transfer. No heat is lost to the environment. So that means that the adding these together, this would be negative, this would be positive, added together since the, uh, the um, magnitude, the number amounts of these are going to be the same. It's just that the signs are going to be different. Added together, they should equal zero. Okay, so we can now plug in the values that were given for this. So the delta H of the reaction is something that we need to uh, figure out. So you can look up the uh, enthalpy of the reaction um, into in a table and find well, well what is what is the enthalpy of the reaction when we're talking about the combustion of ethane well if you look that up as i'm going to write now actually um we actually have to solve for that because this is going to be what we solve for we don't we so we're going to look for this since we know that this is equal to this, if we can find this, then we'll have that because they're equal but opposite. So then all we need to do to so is solve for the delta H of the reaction. So we'll plug in this information. So then zero is equal to delta H of the reaction. And we have the mass of the water, which is 855 grams, so we'll put that in, 855 grams, multiplied by the specific heat of the water, which is 4.18, 4.18, and that's going to be joules per gram degree Celsius, multiplied by the change in temperature, 
final minus initial. So the final temperature is 98 minus, oops, I forgot the zero, 98.0 degrees Celsius minus the 25.0. Point zero degrees Celsius. So 98.0 minus 25.0 is going to be 73. So it's a positive change of 73 degrees. So that's 73 degrees multiplied by this times this. Notice that grams cancels out and then the degrees uh, degree Celsius cancel out with here and we were left with joules, which is what we want because we're going to be solving for the change in the heat of the reaction, right? The enthalpy of the reaction, which is an energy, which is going to be joules, right? So now we are going to multiply this together. And when we do that, we get... Oh, give me one second here. We're going to get 261, 269. Where we go? So it's going to be 0 is equal to delta H of the reaction plus 260. What did I say? 260, 261. 269. So 261.269.19, I believe. Yeah. And this is going to be joules. And so now that I have that, I can just subtract this from both sides. So I'm going to minus 261,269.19 joules and then subtract. Uh, from zero on this side to 61,269.19 joules. And then I have delta H, right? Delta H negative 261,269.19. Thousand two sixty nine point one nine joules is equal to delta H of the reaction. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to write that up here. So delta H of the reaction is going to be equal to oops, equal to negative two, 261,000 269.19 joules. Um, typically, this is going to be in kilojoules. So we want to convert this to kilojoules. So this is going to be negative 261.269.19 kilojoules. And uh, the conversion from joules to kilojoules is that one kilojoules equal to a thousand joules. So I ended up dividing this by a thousand to get to kilojoules. So now that I have that, now I can erase this because I don't need that anymore. The next thing is. Okay. So the next thing is, um, this is the amount of kilojoules that was produced, or I'm sorry, I should say absorbed into the water. And right, remember, so this is the amount of, of energy that was absorbed into the water. Um, and so because we're assuming that there's a perfect transfer from the water or from the reaction to the water, it's the same number for the reaction in our problem. Now, we need to figure out um, how many moles this converts into, right? So we need to figure out, well, how many moles 
of the uh, ethane were burned. And in order to figure that out, we need the relationship between the kilojoules of energy that's released in the reaction and the moles. So what we need to do is now we need to calculate the standard enthalpy of the reaction using the standard enthalpies of formation for each of these and using the equation. So delta H of a reaction, the standard enthalpy of the reaction is equal to the sum of the, how should I write this? Uh, the, the sum of the enthalpies of formation, standard enthalpies of formation of products minus the sum of the standard enthalpy of formation of reactants. So we're going to use that equation. So in order to use this equation, you got to look these, these up in, in a table. So you look it up on the internet, you find tables in the, in the back of your textbook or on the internet or something, but you look up those values. I'm going to look them up and put them in. So let's get into this. So let's start. So here, uh, All right, now there's one thing I want to say. Oh, I forgot the I forgot the states here. This is going to be important for this problem because um, depending on what state you use, uh, it'll change the answer. Right. Okay, so here, um, you know, this is being burnt. So if you're using liquid water or if you're using gaseous water, right, I'm going to use gas, but, you know, sometimes you might have liquid there. So if they have liquid, um, the heat of formation of water is going to be different depending on whether you have a gaseous water or liquid water. So, um, if you use one or the other, it's going to change your answer slightly. So I just want you to be aware, with it, aware of that. I'll talk about that when I actually calculate the answer. So I'm going to use gas. So here uh, I'm going to have um, six uh, moles of the water. So the way this works is I have to use the uh, coefficients. So it's going to be products first. So here I have, actually that should be a four. Sorry, that should be a four because I have two times two over here. This should be a four. So here I have four moles of the carbon dioxide. So I'm going to have multiplied by four, four moles. And then whatever the heats of formation of the carbon dioxide is, and you look that up, and you get negative 393.5. So that's going to be negative 393.5, and that's kilojoules per mole. Okay? And here we have four moles, right? Because we have four coefficient plus and then we add to that the water now water in this case I'm using it as a gas and so here it's going to be six times whatever the heat of formation of gaseous water is and that's going to be negative 241.8 And again, that's kilojoules per mole. And again, this number is going to be different if you use the liquid water, right? So just be aware that um, this is, you know, your answer is going to depend on what you use here. The rest of it is obviously going to be gas. So carbon dioxide, oxygen, ethane, those are going to be gas. Um, but there might be a difference in whether you 
decide that water is going to be a liquid that when it forms or if it's going to be a gas when it forms during the combustion reaction. Okay, so then this is your products, right? And then we're going to subtract the reactants. So we do the same thing for the reactants. I'm going to write the reactants down here because I don't really have a lot of room on this side, or I might, I might continue. Let's see. Um, so then I have minus the reactants. So here, I'll just continue here. If I, if I need to, I'll move down here. So here I have um, oxygen. So the thing to remember about your elements, this is an element in a standard state, gaseous oxygen. Therefore, the standard uh, enthalpy of, of formation, the enthalpy of formation for this elements, any elements in their standard state is zero. So that's going to be zero, right? So seven times, right? So if I do seven moles times, you know, zero, uh, that's going to end up being zero anyway. So I'm just writing there just to be complete. So I'm not skipping a step in case anyone, you know, uh, I don't want to, you know, leave anyone behind. So here, 7 moles times 0 um, for the enthalpy of formation. And then we're going to add to that uh, ethane. So, and I'm going to add, I'm going to just keep it down here. I'm going to write it down here. So we're going to add to that the ethane. I have 2 moles of ethane, so it's going to be 2 moles of ethane and then multiply by the heat of formation of ethane, which is negative 8468. 8468. So negative 84.68 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so now I've got my equation. So now all I need to do is Multiply this together, multiply this together, add those, and let's see what I got. Yep. Um, and then I'm going to add, I'm going to, this is, this ends up being zero anyway, so that's zero. So then I multiply these together. So negative times a negative, that's going to become positive. So I'm adding that. So when I do all the math, you should get. What did I get? I got negative 28.55. So negative 28.55, kilojoules. Okay. So that's for this reaction here, but I want this in kilojoules per mole, right? So notice we have two moles here in our equation. So if we burn two moles, we get this, but I want it per one mole. So then I'm going to take this, right, divided by two moles of C2H6, and then that's going to give me the kilojoules per mole. And when I do that, I get 1427. Again, negative 1427.72, I think. 72. So 72 kilojoules per mole of C2H6, ethane. So now I have that. Well, why, why did I go through all of this to get this? It took us a while, so just to remind ourselves, what, what do we need this for? Well, if we go back to what we had before, um, here, this is the heat of the reaction that was needed to heat the water from 25 degrees Celsius 
to 98 degrees Celsius. So in our problem, in our particular specific example problem that we're doing, um, this is the amount of heat that was required. We need to convert this amount of energy, heat, into moles of the ethane that was needed to be burned to produce that amount of heat that was absorbed by the water. Oops. Sorry about that. So now we can use this as a conversion factor. So I can use this to convert this amount of kilojoules into moles of the ethane. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to erase all of this now because I don't need it. Okay. Okay. So here. So now I'm going to take the negative 261.269. Oh, why do I have two points in there? Oh, so I don't need that last part here because, you know, I got enough decimal places. 269 kilojoules. And now I can use this to help me convert to moles. So I have kilojoules on the top, so I'm going to put kilojoules on the bottom. So negative 1,427.72. Oh, one thing I want to mention. Okay, this was the amount of kilojoules per mole that I got uh, when I assumed the, the water was a gas. If I assume that this is a liquid, um, I should get, what's the answer I should get? Um, 1560. So if it was a gas, it would be negative 15. If it was a liquid water that I assumed, you should have gotten 1560 uh, kilojoules per mole. So this would have been an answer if this was a liquid. This is the answer if it was a gas. So I'm going with the gas. So I'm just letting you know that if you're in your problem, it's liquid, then this is what you should have gotten. Um, so then you'd have a different conversion here. So this is going to be kilojoules, and this is going to be one mole of the C2H6 kilojoules cancel out now that I have moles. But notice here, I have dividing negative by negative. That's going to become positive. That's important because number of moles can't be negative. You can't have a negative number of things, right? So they, that's good that they cancel out, okay? And so now when we calculate the number of moles of the actual ethane that was burned in order to heat the water from 25 to 98, that's going to be... 0 0.182997, 0 0.182997 moles of C2H6 ethane. Okay, let me double check. 182, 182997, yes. Okay, so now, now that we have the moles of the Ethane that was burned, what are they asking for in the problem? Let's go back. They're asking for what volume of ethane at 23 degrees Celsius and 752. Guess what? We have to use the ideal gas law. So we're going to have to use PV equals NRT. So we've got the number of moles now of the ethane. Now we need to convert that into liters. So we need to take our, our temperature of the gas at 23 degrees. We've got to convert that to Kelvin. So we'll do that over here. So 23 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. That's going to give us 296.15 Kelvin. So that's our temperature. 
right? So this is the temperature we're going to put in. Now we also have to convert our pressure into atmospheres. So they're giving us 752 atmospheres. So here we got 752, oh, I'm sorry, we got 752 millimeters of mercury, millimeters of mercury over one. So now we're going to use our conversion. We know that 760 millimeters of mercury is equal to one atmosphere of mercury. So the millimeters of mercury cancel out. So we divide these two and we end up with what pressure? 9895. So this is going to be equal to 0 0.9895 atmospheres. So now that we have our pressure in atmospheres, we've got our temperature in Kelvin. Now we can plug in everything. So we're going to solve for volume. So volume is going to be equal to NRT over P. So now we put in the number of moles. Here's our number of moles, 0 0.182997. Moles of our ethane. And then that's going to be multiplied by R, which is 0 0.08206. And that's going to be liter atmospheres over Kelvin mole. And then that's going to be multiplied by the temperature, which is 296.15. Kelvin, and then divided by the pressure, which we calculated here, 0 0.9895, so 0 0.9895 atmospheres. So look here, moles cancel out, Kelvin cancels out, atmospheres cancels out, leaving liters, which is volume. So now all we need to do is multiply and divide, and we get our answer. And when we do that, we get 4.49. Now, as far as sig figs go, let me put liters. It's going to be liters. As far as sig, fig, sig figs go, um, actually, we're going to only have uh, three sig figs because remember here, when you add and subtract, your, your answer should have the same number of decimal places as the least number. Here I have zero decimal places, so the last significant figure is going to be six for there. So we have three sig figs here. Um, if we look at the other values here, um, we have that value, that was three sig figs, and this was three sig figs. And so basically the our answer is going to have three sig figs. So this is the answer here. Now, if you use this value because your water was liquid, then your answer should become, if I remember correctly, 4.11 liters, right? So this is if you have liquid water as your, um, in your, um, what you call equation here. But for me, I did gas, so then this would be the answer for having gas. So let me just double check the answer that I have here. Yep, 411. So 4.11 liters would be if, you, if your water instead of gas was liquid. That's it for this video. If you enjoyed this video, if this helped you in any way, then please, by all means, like the video, share the video. Also, make sure that you hit that like button somewhere around here. Also, do me a favor, su uh, support the channel, subscribe. That helps me out a lot. So when you subscribe, hit that notification bell. So that way when you, uh, and also click all. So that way when you, uh, when I print, put out videos, you'll see them all. And then finally, put a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know what you think. Ask me questions. I would love to hear from you. Also, you know, if you have a particular problem or a question you need help with or a topic you want me to cover, uh, put that down below. I'd like to do that for you.
Thanks for joining me and have a great day.